What's up everybody? This is the Hedge Mage and welcome back to another video. Today we are taking a look at three new colorless cards that just got released in Outlaws of Thunder Junction. Each of these cards were printed at the common rarity, which means they are now legal in the popper format. So we are going to be taking a look at exactly what each of these cards do and whether or not they're going to have some kind of impact on the format. Like I've said previously, not much in this set I think is going to be super impactful. We definitely don't have anything on the same level of something like All That Glitters or Murmuring Mystic, so nothing that's really going to warp the format. That being said, there are definitely a few cards in this set that I think are worth taking a look at. But before we get any further, guys... If you enjoy the content that I create and you want to support the channel, if you could leave a like on this video and subscribe, I would greatly appreciate that. And with that said, let's get into it. So coming in at number three, we have Gold Pan for two generic mana. It is an artifact with the equipment type. When Gold Pan enters the battlefield, create a treasure token. So you create an artifact token with tap, sacrifice this artifact, and add one mana of any color. Equipped creature gets plus one, plus one, and you can equip it for one generic mana. Now, the equipment side of this card, I honestly don't care about. Uh, it's the fact that it's two mana to create uh, another artifact or a another mana that you can use later uh the art the fact that this is a two mana artifact that creates essentially two artifacts basically for two mana you get plus two on your affinity count which is pretty decent uh definitely you can make extra treasure with deadly dispute so you can etb this creates a treasure sack it with the deadly dispute make another treasure and draw two cards there really isn't an equipment deck out in the meta right now, so we're not really going to be looking at this card and going into any any deck of that sort. Definitely this seems like it can fit in in any deck where artifacts matter or you want a little extra ramp. To be honest, with a lot of these new artifacts that came out in the set, this is probably the only one that I could foresee seeing any bit of play probably would end up seeing more play in PDH than in Constructed Popper. Still is a pretty decent card, but uh, not really good enough in my mind to make waves in the format, so it's why we got it at number 3 today. Coming in at number 2, I have Conduit Pylons. So it is a land, has the desert type. When Conduit Pylons enters the battlefield, you surveil one. So you look at the top card of your library. You may put that card into your graveyard, or you can leave that card on top. You can tap it for a colorless mana, or you can pay one generic mana, tap it, and add one mana of any color. So this fixes your mana, and it could potentially put a card you don't need into your graveyard, or maybe a card in your graveyard that you'd like to use later. So this card, I think, does a lot, and when it comes to Flickertron or even Altertron, I think this is probably going to replace their... I think it is Shimmering Grotto. I might be uh, screwing up the name there. Is there are a few different uh, cards that... Uh, basically our, our filtering cards and I, I can't really keep them all straight i think it's shimmering grotto though uh which basically is does the exact same this card is except it is not a desert and you scry one instead of surveilling one and i think surveilling is slightly better especially in things like flicker tron and alter tron because you could probably speed up what you want to do by getting one of the cards that you need in your graveyard or just by getting rid of a card that you don't need at the time so Basically, with Altertron, for example, you can put a Mirror Retriever in your graveyard, and if you already have one Mirror Retriever in your hand, you can start going off rather quickly. So, that is, that's that's pretty nice. Also, you know, getting Ghostly Flicker in your graveyard so that you can play a Mnemonic Wall and then bounce that Ghostly Flicker and start Flicker looping things. 
that can be pretty nice, especially since you don't have to cast spend the mana to cast that flicker uh, before going off. It's already in your graveyard, so you can already start doing doing things. So definitely this card is pretty nice. I definitely think this card is going to be played. I don't know how much. I think where it fits in is a very niche in the format, so definitely in Tron decks. Tron it definitely gets nice little pieces here and there and a lot of sets, uh, especially when you get new utility artifacts or just other ways to filter your mana or have other types of interaction like that. So this card definitely, I think, is going to find a place in Tron decks, though really unclear on whether or not it will anywhere else. My gut feeling is that it will not, but still a very good card and excited to brew with this one. And coming in at number three, we have Jagged Barons, which is a land with the desert type. Yet again, Jagged Barons enters the battlefield tapped. When Jagged Barons enters the battlefield, it deals one damage to target opponent. You can tap it for a black or a red mana. So this is one of the new lands from a new land cycle that's coming out in this set all of them have a different color pair and all of them have the same etb effect so they can all deal one damage to target opponent this is probably the main one that i could foresee seeing play though i could potentially see the others uh making it into decks as well this one I think will for sure see play, especially in decks like Mono Black Burn, since they do need to splash red in order to play the order to pay the flashback cost of Bump in the Night. I have heard some talk that this will now replace Rakdos Carnarium. I'm not so sure if it will, because I think you are still going to want maybe one to two Carnariums in your deck just to bounce things like Bajuka Bog or even this card itself, um, as well as, you know, things maybe even if you're running Witch's Cottage or um, Mortuary Myers in your deck, you might want to be able to bounce them or any other cards that have ETB effects. So I don't think this will necessarily replace Carnarium, but I think it will. you will be running some number of these in Model Blackburn. There are some other ideas as well as maybe even into Rakdos Madness. I'm not so sure about Madness is going to want to run these. I could be wrong about that. It definitely gets pl another damage through in that deck, which it is a burn deck, so that is something. Well, one, I think, place that people aren't maybe thinking of where it could go is actually in Pinger Burn. Now, it is a tap land, so I could see the argument against it. So the one damage from this card definitely turns on some effects in that deck, like Skewer the Critics is probably the biggest one that's played throughout most lists uh, since... You can then cast Skewer the Critics for Expectacle costs since opponent has lost life this turn. So you can maybe run one or two of in that deck and it would probably be, probably be okay. Though not great since I don't think that deck really does want to play tapped lands. Though there have been times when I've been playing that deck when I top deck... I got my opponent down to like one life and I top deck a land and then I lose next turn if the land that I top deck was this land I would have won that turn so I could maybe see it going into pinger burn as well though I think the main deck that wants this is gonna be mono black burn it definitely seems like it's gonna add a bit to that as well as some nice mana fixing for the flashback cost of bump in the night so definitely this card I am assuming will see a bit of play though it is still very niche like some of the other cards that we talked about today and in my other recent top three videos that's going to do it for today's video guys thanks again to anyone who watched to the end you are pretty cool but i would like to know what you guys think of the cards that we talked about today do you agree or disagree with my assessment of them are there cards that are either lands or other new artifacts that are coming out in this set that you think should have made the cut would love to hear your thoughts about that in the comment section below as always guys i hope you all are having a wonderful day and i'll see you next time